By this time, you have received your instrument from Quinlan and Fabish or wherever you purchased your instrument. Today, in this video, we're going to talk about how to set up and tear down your percussion equipment. So what's nice about this, uh, as opposed to the case I had back in the day, this bottom, bottom of the case has some nice like rollerblade wheels and you can kind of roll it around and carry it with you. Uh, it's kind of nice, it's like a suitcase piece of luggage and it has an extendable arm here. Um, most models, whether it be Yamaha or Ludwig, will have this type of setup, making it easier for you, the, uh, the student, to transport your gear around. Um, so let's dig in, shall we? I'm gonna lay this case down nicely because there is a bell kit inside and we wanna make sure that even though it's a percussion instrument, we typically hit things in percussion, they're still delicate instruments. So like, like a suitcase, like a piece of luggage, we're gonna unzip and we have a zipper, we have usually two zippers here. We're gonna take one, we're gonna open it all the way around. Make sure you go all the way around the edge so you can open up the flap. And inside, yours is probably gonna look a little bit different, but you're, you're essentially gonna have the same type of thing. Your pad will probably be in this pouch here. Your stand might actually be underneath the instrument. Let me show you in this area here. So you might have your stand in these pockets and your bell kit will probably be under here. Keep in mind this is a used bell kit so it's gonna be laid out a little bit differently, but in essence, the same type of hardware will be included in your kit. So let's dig in. I'm gonna move this case aside. I'm gonna talk about your practice pad. And you might actually have a practice pad and an actual snare drum. So uh, if you have an actual snare drum, um, I'm going to talk about what different top piece you're going to have to put on your stand later. But for right now, we're going to put the practice pad aside and we're going to set up our bell kit here. So this is a typical base of a, a percussion stand. Actually, let me see if we have... No. Um, there will be a, uh, a turn screw here, much like this one, and that's going to lock this piece in place or unlock it so you can move it. So normally there will be a turn screw, you want to use lefty loosey righty tighty, so you're going to want to turn it to the left and pull out one leg at a time. Notice how I did that, I'll do it again, one leg at a time to kind of unlock them. And then I like to just take two legs and then open them up like this. If that's too hard, sometimes you can kind of push it against your chest and like push or use anything as leverage to kind of push that out. Um, but I generally, I think for, for students, it's easier to take two legs and pull it out. Now be careful students, a couple places you can pinch your fingers right here and in here. So when you close it, don't be in a hurry to just slam it closed because that's gonna be a very big ouch point right there or here. So any, any of those places, trust me, it hurts a lot. I've been there, done that. So um, make sure you pull in the bottom legs and spread the stand out and open it. You don't want to open it all the way to the bottom, but you want a nice wide base so it's not going to tip over and move around on you. And once that's set up, you want to take the top part. So because we're setting up our mallets, this looks like, I don't even know how to describe this, it kind of looks like a table with some arms on the side. So we're going to open this up a little bit here. You notice how I loosen this up. I'm going to do the same thing. Take each arm, kind of extend it, and then that should, that should let this travel easier. So I'm going to push that up. And then now when it's at the top, I'm going to kind of push a little bit harder to make sure it's, it's totally at the top of its travel point. And then just like with this non-existent turn screw, this one's here, we're going to turn that righty. Remember righty, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And once that's nice and tight, Actually tighten up a little more. I want to make sure that it doesn't slip, especially with the mallets being on top. We're going to put that in the base. So we're going to take this part, we're going to drop it in the base. Now, this might not be as loose, this might be tight, so you'll also need to adjust this. So make sure we loosen that up so it can, I'll do that again, so it's tight. You might not be able to get the top in there, so if that doesn't work, Make sure you loosen up that screw, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. Notice how it opens up. So now it can receive the top part and you're set to go. Now on yours, like I said, this one is used. So you will have these rubber little hands, these little arms on each side and they're gonna hold this bell kit. So really, once you look at this and once you get it, it's gonna be easy to set up. So you can see if you look here, this side is wider 
and this side is a little skinnier. This side extends farther and this side's a little shorter. So based on the mallet instrument, if I just look at this, the side that's wider is going to be here. The side that's skinnier is going to cover here. Because if I try to set it opposite, um, your wider side wouldn't have any support. So you definitely want to be able to set it up so the smaller side is with the smaller part of the bells and the larger side is with the larger part of the bells. Now, you'll see like a threaded part here. Don't worry about that. You notice right here, there's this little, this little um, beveled area or this part that kind of sticks up. This little nub, we'll call it a nub, that's going to go inside this receptacle here on the bottom of the bells. And that's going to prevent the bells from tipping over or falling down. So what I like to do is I like to kind of sit, crisscross applesauce, get about eye level or maybe, you know, for some of my students that might be under it. And I want to kind of find that receptacle, that hole. And I want to kind of gently lower it and I want to bring it right into that little nub there. There we go. And notice how the stand even kind of settled down a little bit. That's perfect. That's good. That's going to hold it. So at that point, what you're going to want to do is set up this bell kit to be what I like to say belt height or like right, right at tummy height, right? Below your belly button, but high enough so you'll be able to play where you don't have to reach down and you don't want to reach up when you're playing. Now this is a bit short for me and it might be short overall for my height, but let me see if I can adjust it. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, might be at the top here. Let's see. Oh, got a little more room. There we go. So for me, this would be at belt height, right about where my belt is. It's comfy. My arms aren't all the way down, and they're not all the way up like, you know, like I'd be too small sitting at the kitchen table. Perfect height to be able to reach all the bells and everything comfortably. So make sure that you set it up belt height. Very important. Um, and then when you want to put things away, make sure that take the bells off the same way. You can either lift them off or if you're having trouble, go ahead and sit down and get under it again and try to move it until that, that nub releases from the bottom. It should be pretty effortless, but if you do have trouble, sometimes these can be a little grippy, so you want to make sure you kind of remove it so it does come off without you know, the stand falling off. And from that point, we'll put the bells in the way they're supposed to go, in the bottom of the case, and then this nice little felt padded part's gonna go over and protect your bells so they don't get scratched or knocked out of tune. Because, um, like I was saying earlier, those instruments are pretty sensitive, so if you were to just throw your stand on them, eventually your bells would go out of tune because it would damage the metal and, and kind of, they wouldn't sound as good over time. Um, so let's talk about the practice pad now. The practice pad is going to be set up pretty much the same way, but notice in the bottom it's threaded. Threaded means it's like a, like a screw that goes into like, a, a, like, a, like another part. Let's say like um, that would go into a nut or any part where you'd have to use a screwdriver or turn it, that's what this has. So remember what I was talking about, forget the threads at the top here, they're going to they're gonna, um, they're gonna work with the practice pad. So we're going to take that gently and carefully, again, and sit crisscross applesauce underneath it. Because if you don't do this properly, you can do something called strip the threads or you can cross thread it. Both of those are bad. Um, ask dad. Because <laughs> dad will probably be able to tell you that he's had instances um, where things have happened where, you know, the screw didn't go in right and then it, it got messed up and it creates a big headache. So just make sure you're very careful. If it doesn't turn easily, stop, try to recenter it and put it back on again. Because if, if you screw it on at an angle, it's going to mess up not only this part, but here too, and then you won't be able to fix it. Because the metal will pretty much warp. It'll, it'll change and it, 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 won't, it won't stay the way it's supposed to. So just make sure that it's centered. Make sure you take your time with this right there, and then I'm gonna gently spin until I feel it catch. There we go. And I'm gonna keep spinning. Just keep spinning, just keep spinning. There we go. And then now we're stuck. So, and at this point, actually, if you want to, you can drop these bell arms because you won't be needing this, the arms for the snare drum. 
or the practice pad. Now I'll make sure this might have changed because it's a little bit different. Bring that up to belt height and there, if I had my sticks, I'd be playing right there, belt height, perfectly set up. Um, so a couple things, with the practice pad and with the snare drum, you're going to want your snare drum sticks that came in your kit. With the belt, you're going to want the mallets to use with your kit. Those look like thin rods with like a big um, round ball on the end. Um, and those are to hit the bells. Those are going to get a great sound of the bells. Um, if you use those on the snare drum or the practice pad, you run the risk of damaging that instrument. And it's the same with the, the drum sticks. If you use drum sticks on mallet instruments, you might damage this instrument as well. So there's specific tools for the specific instrument that you're using. So make sure that you're using that and only that for that instrument. So remember, drumsticks with the pad and snare drum, uh, mallets with the mallet instruments, with the bells and anything else you might use. All right, so let's talk about putting everything back away. Now, before we do that, I wanna talk about the snare drum. I have a drum over here. This is gonna be a little bit different if you have a snare drum at home. You're still gonna use the base of everything you were using before, okay? But, let me unscrew this top part, practice pad. Here we go. This top part will come off. This, we'll call it um, the bell basket or the bell stand. This top part will come off. And you would have another stand that would have a snare drum basket, and it would kind of look like this. Actually very similar to this, except it'll be collapsed. And probably in your case, it would look like this. Maybe a little shorter at about right here. And that's what would go in here. Hey, that'll work actually. Let's do that. So we're gonna take this top part. Not all pieces work like Legos like this, by the way, in drum world, but sometimes they do, and that's really good. So we're gonna lower that. And this system right here is gonna be a little bit different than yours. You just might have, um, like a little turn screw and it only goes this way, one way, right? This, this stand is a little bit advanced and it kind of goes laterally side to side and then up and down as well. Your stand's probably just gonna go up and down to bring the snare drum in a, in a playing position. So I'm gonna demonstrate that. I'm gonna bring it right about there. I'm gonna tighten this down. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey, same for all the percussion instruments. You won't need to really crank it down because if you do, again, we talked about that stripping or cross threading, you might damage the metal on the inside. So only tighten it so it's snug. Um, and that way you won't really have to um, really grip it hard or ask mom or dad for help in undoing it. So now you have these arms, kind of, the, kind of like the bell stand, and you're gonna bring these down, open this up, and it should drop down. Now what I'm gonna do, Oh, it's already bottomed out, cool. So a couple things. You wanna make sure that this is not open too far, but it's also, doesn't just open and get stuck here. Because if it gets stuck here, you're not gonna be able to put a snare drum on there. There's no way that this is gonna fit on there without damaging the bottom head. Very careful to not have these hit or rest on this bottom head. The bottom head of a snare drum is thin, and if you puncture it, it will sound like garbage. So you don't want to do that. So make sure that you're very careful with the bottom head. And never hit the bottom head with your sticks. Only the top head, or what we call the batter head. So the basket, let's talk about the snare drum basket. There's this big knob at the bottom. Again, yours might look different. It might not be knurled like this. You might have the, the grips, it might be contoured for your fingers. There's a lot of different types out there. But they all work the same, even if they look different. So this, again, runs on the concept of left, lefty loosey, righty tighty, same type of stuff. So we're gonna spin this. Mm, probably needs a little more, so we're gonna keep doing that a little more. Let's go, actually, tighten that down a little bit so it doesn't move. Loosen a little more. That might work, I'm gonna just one more shot, there we go. The reason I'm kind of really trying to dial this in is because you don't want the arms 
to break the plane of the stand. So you don't want it to go be under this. And I don't even know if this stand lets that happen. Some of them do. This stand looks like it has like a safety lock in place, like it bottoms out before. But I've had some stands where the arms will actually go under that. And then you'll have this middle part pushing into the bottom head. And remember how we talked about that bottom head being really thin and sensitive? So something to watch out for in case your, your stand overextends downward. So we're gonna bring this up just a touch. Do a little righty tighty there. Make sure that it's not gonna to touch the bottom. All right, so I'm gonna pick up my snare drum. Generally recommend it with two hands. Um, and you can do it seated or standing. I'm gonna be kneeling for this because I'll be probably at the perfect height to kind of look over it to make sure that none of the arms are going to touch the bottom head. And if they do touch it on accident, that's not the end of the world. You just don't want to rest the drum on it or forcefully drop it on top of one of those arms. So that as you see I'm doing, I'm kind of loosening up here to open up the arms to really receive the snare drum better. And the first couple times you do this, uh, percussionists, just be patient. It's going to take a little time. Uh, just like with anything, uh, the more you do it, the easier it's going to be. You know, whether it's, it's sports, it's video games, it's, you know, the math problems you do, uh, reading, everything you do, the more you do it, it gets easier. So now this looks pretty good. It looks like I'm in the right place. I'm going to give that a couple cranks to the right, make sure that it's secure. And doing so, what this does is it hugs the snare. So even if it does, for some reason, move to the side, it's not going to fall off. Okay, so it has a good grip there. Not that you would ever turn your snare drum upside down, but it's nice to know that it's secure. Your, your beautiful new instrument is secure. So what you want to do is set up the snare drum so it's flush or flat with the ground. You don't want it at an angle. Um, back in the day, jazz drummers would set it up at an angle, but that was for a specific technique. It was for a different type of snare drum technique that we're going to be teaching. So we want to flush even Steven with the ground. And once that's done, we're going to kind of tighten this part up too. Now I know there's a lot to go over in here. There's a lot to learn. So please feel free to review any of this if you forget at any point any of the steps. You can kind of skip past the bells and especially if you're working on snare, you know, please feel free to go over this and, and just review steps as much as you need to. So right now, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of adjust this to make sure it's at, remember, belt height. So we wanna right about there, right below your belly button, right about at your belt line on your pants or shorts. Good afternoon, Ariana. <laughs> this is a reminder that we have nothing but cake from the WBCC. They are on a the table just outside the office. Please remember that the cake is not going to stay good over the weekend. So please come and get one if you have not already. Nothing but cakes. All right, cool. Just a little bit taller for him. There we go. Like I said, this is a process. You're going to have to be patient with this. Because um, it takes a little bit to get used to. There we go. So right there, that's at belt height. That feels good. Now it's different than, well, there's a lot of things different from the, the practice pad to the snare drum. But this has, we saw underneath, there are wires here. That's the snare mechanism. That's what turns this drum from being normal sounding tom-tom to a snare drum. And what I did there was I flipped up what is called the snare drum throw, or some people call it the snare mechanism. And this is just a lever that you would move from side to side. So if this throw is usually on the, as you're facing it, it's on the right, you would flip this and you're going to feel some resistance because the, the wires are being pressed against the bottom head. It's safe though, it won't break it. So you're going to want to go ahead and push through some of that resistance until it snaps up at the top and you know you're locked in. That, that way you know you have the snare drum sound now. If, you'd not, if you're not getting the snare drum sound because your snares are too loose, we're going to, again, take this throw off to relieve pressure from the bottom head. And you can adjust your snare sensitivity. In essence, what you're doing is you're raising or lowering by, by very small increments the snare wires on the bottom of the drum. So when you tighten it up, you're bringing it up a little closer. So when you flip that throw up, it's bringing them right up to the head. 
So these, this little turn screw right here, it's at the top. Again, yours might look a little different, but again, righty tighty, lefty loosey. You can mess around with that to try to figure out and get a good snare sound. If it's too loose, like this, I'm gonna loosen it up. If it's really loose, Mostly tom tom sound and like a little bit of rattles in there. So we're gonna want to tighten that up to the right here. Give it a couple turns, and then let's see. That sounds pretty good. I would be good with that sound. From there, always make sure you kind of take your snares off, and that way you're relieving all the tension on the bottom head. So you can turn this with with ease without any tension. That's a really sound too so it's up to your ear what you like but I would definitely recommend against that very loose sound and you don't want it to be too tight because then the snare drum gets what we call choked out or boxy so you don't really hear the good sound it's just it's almost like a very dead snare drum sound if they're too tight you want some of that buzziness some of the rattles but it's it's a very fine there's like a like a uh, we'll call it a Goldilocks zone right so there's a nice area where it sounds good and if it's too loose, it kind of sounds icky. And if it's too tight, it sounds icky. So you have a lot of range where it sounds good, but if it's way too loose or way too tight, that's you'll, you'll hear it. it just doesn't sound too good. So then, after you have this all set up, how do we tear it down, Mr. Collins? I'm glad you asked. So first, what you want to do, again, disengage the snares. We're going to take the throw. We're going to drop the throw. Takes the snares off the head. Now, before you just try to wrestle this off, remember, we need to loosen the basket underneath. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to hold it up for, so you can see it better there. I'm going to kind of turn it to the left here. You're not going to want to hold it up yourself, but I'm doing this so the camera can see it better. So, you're going to want to loosen this up, and once that's loose, the snare drum is going to be able to move. And once that happens, I'm going to bring this down. You can take the snare off, two hands, please, all the time, you don't want to drop this, and you can set it on the ground. You can either put it back in your case, I think on the uh, Yamaha cases, there's a big like circular pouch on the front, that's where your snare drum is going to go. I'm not sure about the Ludwig cases, it might be inside, it might be outside, but you can put your snare drum away there. Now, from here, you're going to want to collapse the basket. You don't need to tighten this up all the way. You'll probably want to keep that where it was so you don't have to mess with that setting. You'll want to lefty-loosey here, drop the basket down, swing it back around. I like to put it in line with the rest of the stand so it creates a smaller profile in my case. I want to loosen this part up here, this turn screw, lefty-loosey. Now this is free and can move. I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to put that back in my case. And that usually, that goes in one of these pouches here. So, I'm gonna not put that there because it doesn't go in there, it's a little too big for that. But then this base, remember, you have one of these down here, even though it's missing, lefty loosey to free up these legs. And then what I like to do is, I like to have this down in the ground to give me some leverage. And I'll take the two legs, remember, watch out the pinchy zones, and you'll wanna kinda push in. And maybe for starters, don't even wrap your fingers around, but just kinda push so you don't pinch your fingers. Very important, okay? And then, take it. I like to put this side first because you'll have three rubber legs here, so no matter what, you're not gonna damage yourself or anything, and those will point up. And that is, that is in there. Mallet stand, again, I like to have this side pointing out. We've got both of our stands in there, nice and ready to go. This pouch. That's for our practice pad. I'm going to make sure that's in there and secure. Now your drumsticks, you might have a stick bag. Um, there are some places here that you can kind of keep your sticks um, and mallets. Good place would be to just keep them with your instrument. But make sure you put everything away nice. And then once that's done, you can zip everything up. I like to zip from the bottom to the top. That way I know where the zippers are. It's one less thing I need to mess around with. And then, you can raise the, the luggage handle, so if this one doesn't want to raise, there we go. And then you can kind of you know, bring it to the side of your bed or wherever you store it, and just keep it there, and you're ready for the next time to practice. 
So, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me. Uh, my email's on the website, and you'll see it at the end of this video. I'm looking forward to the first lesson. You guys take care. We'll see you.